come in. And I feel a guy that can get upfield, be explosive, and, and get the ball back for our offense in good field position. Yeah. You mentioned Kenny. I, I want yeah. to ask, no problem putting those other starters in those roles or anything like that? In regards to returns? Correct. Yeah, absolutely okay. not. Kenny's just been here. He's done yeah. it. He's, he's been – I told him, that, hey, let's get one in the end zone. We've been <laughs> so close. It's always 60. It's a 70. Yo, let's get one in the end zone. But, yeah, the, the rest of the guys, those guys, are they're, they're all good. I, I feel confident in all those guys. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who we have back there. We got guys that can run. Curious for the, the strong side end spot. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the guys you've been looking at? Obviously, Malcolm's back, but yep. who are some of the other guys pushing him right now? I mean, Jeremy Robinson's, it's those two two guys. It's like mm -hmm. 1A, 1B, and it rotates every other day. And it's awesome because you see when one guy really has a great day in practice, then the other guy picks up his game the next. So competition's just elevating those guys there. And then I can't, Zion DeBose, you know, he's going into his senior year here. He's in his master's. Very smart guy. He had a, I mean, he was very explosive in high school had a lot of sacks he's a guy that can play both positions so he's multiple on both sides but Jeremy and Malcolm are kind of battling it out, it out right now and it's it's and then Zion's kind of rotating back and forth in there with those guys morning for Davion yep what's the adaptation process been like you like you good his body it yeah. looks different than Jeremy and Malcolm yeah. like where's he at he, he's big body and he, he just got here late in the summer so he's in the beginning stages but day by day he is improving he still has to keep you know in, in all fairness to him he's got great size he's got a motor which is he just has to keep learning to play book and vet he's he's gonna get there because he has all the physical tools but just like those guys were last year it took a while unfortunately that was happening during the season but now I think we're in a pretty good place he'll get there he's got a good attitude and he works hard yeah he's one that has the, the red shirt failed yeah too. he also has red you know, shirt. I know like Dean Miller for example like Correct. when you get these guys is it I mean, Dean, for example, he talked about, hey, I'm going to come in and redshirt. For like Davion, what's the conversation with him like when he has that? For us, with, with Davion, it's, hey, you're, you're, you always come in and you, you're trying to play. Mm -hmm. The great thing about the rule they put in years ago, you get four games. So you're, you should always have the mindset, I'm going to come in, compete, and try to play. Whether it's special teams, whether it's defensive end, that's, that's the mindset I tell all those guys. Then eventually, you know, you either play in your four games. It could be early in the season. It could be later in the season. And then we'll, we'll decide when you need to, you know, redshirt if you're ready or you're, you're not. So as those guys, it's, it's as maximize all the reps you can. How exciting is it to have so many room like the linebacker room for example yeah. where you can now use some of those guys on special teams like it, how exciting is that it's huge as a special teams coordinator you always want you always want depth because you know your starters are going to be limited on how what they can do on special teams right if they're starting and they're playing 45 50 snaps it's going to be hard to start them on four special teams so if you have good depth and good competition there's only 11 guys out there on the field at a time but you can steal 33 reps on special teams in every game. You know what I mean? 25 reps if you're started on all four units. You know what I mean? So those guys understand that, and that's something we preach every day in special teams meeting. Like, there's only 11 guys out there, so you better get on some special teams if you want to get on the field and compete. I apologize if you were asked this title kind of the yeah. format today, but you know, we talked a little bit in the spring about the defensive ends coaching and just focusing on a small group of guys. Yep. How do you think they responded now to being able to have more hands-on work with you as opposed to having 20 guys? I mean, you'll have to ask them, but yeah. in my opinion, I think, yeah, yeah, I, I think I think they enjoy it. More intimate, intimate room, can ask specific questions. It's not it's not necessarily about being overcrowded. It's just, um, it's it's anytime it's like being in, in college when you have, you're in a, in a theater style room or you have 20 people in the classroom you know if the teacher gets to know you a little bit and you have more one-on-one -on -one time with them so I think they're enjoying it and they can always come to my office and both sides whether it's defensive tackles or defensive events can come to my office ask any questions and make sure we're all on the same page so it's been really good and then even from a standpoint of you get uh, Dean in here you get David in here you get even Lonnie in here mm -hmm. to have kind of more one-to-one -one contact has to be good for I would imagine getting them up to speed on what they need to know yeah it's it's vital it's vital because no one's waiting, right? No one cares if you know the playbook, or but you and me getting more one, myself getting more one-on-one -on -one time with them. It's it's been it's been exponential for the growth. Schematically, do you want both of your ends to get to the quarterback, or do you do you kind of want one guy maybe dropping back or playing things a little bit differently? How do you approach that? schematically?
quickly for me is, hey, we're never going to get to the quarterback unless we stop the run, right? So our goal is, hey, be dominant in the run game. And then when we get them into third down and long, then we can pin our ears back and widen out and go get after the quarterback. So everything we're teaching is, hey, stop the run, because if you can't stop the run, you're never going to be in third and long. It's hard for Coach B to call a play on third and one, right? Third and two, third and three, because they can still run it or they go play action pass. You're never going to know. But if we do a good job stopping the run, then we can call our pass rush games. And they're both, I mean, both guys. The best we've ever been, whether it's the previous stop in here, is when you can rush the passer with four and drop seven in coverage. So if we're not having a blitz, go all out blitz and play cover zero. If we can play seven in coverage, rush four guys, that's when we're really, really good. And that's where we're trying to get to. Part of the reason I asked that is because Malcolm didn't really statistically pop in terms yeah. of sacks. Yep. That's for lost last season, but he was in the backfield enough. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just a product of circumstance or if that's yeah, something that it, you want to try It's to a combination yeah. of, it, it's the same thing. He gets back there, but we weren't a very good run defense. So yeah. th those stats are always going. When you, stop, when you start becoming a good run defense, then you have more opportunities. And Or this year, we're trying to play on the edges more. You know, right. not instead of playing head up, we're trying to play on the edge and get those guys to flip their hips, turn the corner, and, and affect the quarterback. Mm -hmm. so yep. Playing on edge. Oh. I was sitting over here talking yep. with Jordan. And I heard you on the way back. Can you talk a little bit more about the return game, punt return, kick return, who's doing that? Yeah, so Kenny Logan's doing kick return. We've got Devin Neal. He, 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 he's getting reps back there. Trevor Wilson's getting reps. Luke Grimm, all those guys are getting kick return reps. Punt returner right now, Luke's been really steady. He's sure-handed and has good vertical ability and can make guys miss. So those are the guys right now really, really standing out. But uh, Kai Thomas has done a good job on kick returns. You kind of saw him. If you saw him out there today, he has some elusive. He can make you miss a little bit so th th those guys has, uh, have all been pretty good you men yep. mentioned playing on edges that's something that Lance has talked about mm -hmm. has talked about yeah. what does that look like for the, the ends for the end so it's you know instead of playing head up the way you defeat an offensive lineman is to get to the perimeter and, and so instead of playing a full man we call it playing half a man play half his shoulder so you can turn your shoulder point your toe and get after the quarterback so you know in the previous year we, we were too head up trying to find out what's going on in the backfield and now it's, hey, defeat the man in front of you, play on an edge, and then find, once you defeat that, then you can make a play in the backfield. So it's more technique things. Yeah. Those guys got coached to play that way yeah. for two years, three yes. years almost. How hard is that to go against two, three years of coaching to flip that? You know, it, it's different because it's guys were recruited to play a specific position and now they're playing, they were more head up, now they're playing on an edge. But I think once they started doing it throughout the spring and saying, wow, I'm not having to run down the center of a guy, we're not a three down front. I've got a three technique and a two big guy protected me. Now I can just use my speed and essentially run around the guy they they're starting to see it, it started registering in the spring and now they're, they're they feel really comfortable with it and you mentioned the strong side I forgot to ask about yep. behind Lonnie I guess who are some of the guys that have been working there behind oh him? Be, between Lonnie and Hayden those guys have been really awesome and like I said Zion's a sharp guy he's a swing guy on both ends and 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 like Cole, Cole Pre Petrus has been a guy he's a hard nose I think he'll be a good special teams kid as well but he's done both sides and then De Demarion Alexander he's working hard as well so we've got a good group but, but the vets between Hatcher and Lonnie and um, Lee and Jeremy and, and Zion those guys have been really solid and they, they've been here a year too so they get it. You mentioned Jeremy. The first guy that Lance brought up with us the other day, the very first day of camp was Jeremy. Yeah. Because there was a play where yeah. he got in the backfield and was like yelling, guys, get up, get up, get up. Yeah. So what's it, that don't touch the hot stove, I think it was. So yeah. How much do you notice his vocal leadership and his he, just kind of He's after? such a quiet, humble guy. And he, he does things the right way all the time. And for him to come out of his shell, and he's a lead by example guy. But sometimes that doesn't affect the whole team. And we need those guys too. So when a guy that doesn't talk that much, when he speaks up, people listen because he's not always just running his mouth and so when he did that guys kind of and they listen and so when I told him he needs to keep talking keep doing right and guy guys will follow he can't just lead by example because he's a good kid he's got to lead and he's got to be a leader on the team and guys will follow yeah. yep one of the things you had mentioned I think when we last talked to you was that you want a lot of your first team Offense, defense, those guys playing on teams. Yes. Has that manifested itself? So it far? has. Okay. And it, it's getting to the point where we're, our, the most difficult task we have is man, he's really good. Man, he's, his backup's really good. Who's better? 
we didn't necessarily have that last year. So I, I, like I said, we haven't played a game yet, just com com competing and guys banging on my door, wanting to be a starter on special teams, and it's good. Even guys that were good last year, we've got guys that are uh, two behind them. Those guys are pushing them, you know, and, and it's important. It, it, it really is important. So when do you determine what's too much of a workload? Like if you get, like, like Kenny, yeah. he's proven he can do it. But yeah. if you get somebody else back there, or even a gunner or whatever it is, yeah. when do you think, that's just this guy's got too many runs? Yeah, we feel like if you're a starter on this defense, we'd like you to start on at least one special team. Maybe two if we're really, really good at it. It, it all depends on the kind of depth we have. But we never want, like, Kenny can't start on four special teams. Okay, because then he's gonna get beat deep, and he's gonna be exhausted when he's playing defense. So he can, he's gonna start on two at the most, and probably one. So we determine, we have a sheet that our analysts put together. It's this whole Excel sheet formula. Those guys are way smarter than I am, and it tells if how many teams they're starting on. And, and Coach Leipold is huge on that. He will get that sheet. He'll look at it. Hey, this guy played 50 snaps, and he's starting on three special teams, and he's tired in the fourth quarter. We gotta have a good backup to sub in if we're on special teams in the fourth quarter. So we have things like that to make sure. We want the best guys on the field, but we also have to be smart, right? And, and make sure we're efficient with our guys. So can you send us that sheet? <laughs> <laughs>